because I want to give you guys an idea of what the bar looks like when there's actually weights on it. So what type of people could benefit from this bar? Well, I'm very much a traditionalist. I'm also very training. I also believe very much in training minimalism. So I believe in uh, kind of concentrating your lifts and do a few big major movements rather than trying to spread everything out. But I do think the squat, regardless of what type of squat you do, is essential for all athletes who are interested in building up strength, explosiveness, speed, agility, everything. So it goes without saying that I think the squat is an essential movement. However, the barbell presents a challenge for certain people, specifically taller individuals, or even people who are just uh, proportioned a certain way. So people who have very long torsos, for instance, or people who have uh, very short femurs compared uh, and, and very long torsos, that can make the back squat a little bit difficult because the thing about the back squat is that the weight, and I'll demonstrate in just a moment, a moment using this uh, regular barbell right here, uh, the weight is a little bit further in the back, whether you're doing a high bar, a low bar squat position. So whether or not you have it in the low bar or high bar, the bar is not gonna start over your center of gravity. So what is the center of gravity? Center of gravity is going to be basically as if you can draw a straight line from the bar down to the center of the feet right there. So when you're squatting with the high bar back squat position, in order to get it over your center of gravity, you have to hinge. So you have to push the hips back. And sometimes if you want to squat really, really deep, that's going to result in the bar actually being in front of the toes a little bit. And as a result, on the way up, you may find that you lose your balance a little bit and your hips will shoot up soon and then it'll feel more like a back exercise. And as a result of that, it's going to be really hard to put emphasis on the uh, hips and thighs. Now, a little bit of spinal flexion with any form of squat is not a big deal. The idea that the spine can't handle a little bit of thoracic flexion with the squat is just a bunch of hysteria. It's absolutely not true. I think people really underestimate just how strong the spine is. So the spine can be a little flexed, that's okay, but you also want the spine to be stable, and if the bar is too far out in front, that means you can lose stability and you can put yourself at risk of injury. So what's great, uh, well, before I get to that, what tall people will tend to do is that they'll switch to either the front squat or the zercher squat. And the advantage of this front squat and the zercher squat is that the bar will already start over your center of gravity since it's more interior loaded. So people will say, okay, I just can push my knees forward a lot and it won't be a problem. I'll be able to do a full squat and then I will be able to stay nice and stable. But the big problem with a front squat and zercher squat versus the back squat is that it's much harder to em emphasize the hips and thighs, and let's face it, when we're training squat, what we're typically thinking of is how can we best target the legs. So as a result of the weight being more in front, you can't really hinge as much, so you can't build up as much elastic energy in the glutes. And likewise, as a result of it being in the front, the big challenge becomes just maintaining that thoracic extension, and as a result of that, frontal loaded squats tend to put much more emphasis on the upper back and postural muscles. So. The same thing goes for like the safety squat bar you see over there, is that it's cambered in the front a little bit. So it's kind of a big, a good mix between the back squat and the front squat, but you still can't typically lift as much with that piece of equipment compared to the back squat. So how does someone who has trouble doing a back squat with a full range of motion, as you often see taller lifters do, uh, do a something that gives them all the same benefits of back squats without actually doing back squats? And I think the solution to that is here. This is the cambered bar. And the cool thing about this bar is that you rack it exactly as you would a back squat. So you perform it much like a back squat. And unlike the front squat and um, other variations of the squat, you don't have to compromise weight at all. So meaning you can lift just as much with this weight as you can with a barbell back squat, even if you're a taller lifter. So the trick with this uh, piece of equipment is, is how do you keep the axis of the bar over your center of gravity when you're doing the full range of motion because you still have to hinge as if you're doing a barbell back squat. And I'll go ahead and show you from a side angle right here. So what you're gonna do is that you're gonna basically grab onto the bar. I like to do a thumbless grip like this. And if you wanna get a little bit of the side, David. Thanks, buddy. And what you're gonna do is that you're going to hinge, but as you're going down, you're going to pull back on the bar a little bit. Now going down during the eccentric phase, that's typically not a problem. But when you're going up, you see if I let go of the bar, it actually 
uh, pulls me forward a little bit because the axis is in front of the, my, my toes right here because I'm, I'm a slightly taller lifter myself. I'm about six foot one, but when I'm going up, in order to avoid losing uh, the weight or having it shift too forward, I can pull the bar back so it stays over my center of gravity. So if I were just doing a back squat, for instance, the weight would go forward, and as a result, I may actually sit my hips up too soon, and I'll end up feeling more of like a good morning. But with the cambered bar, I can just pull the bar back a little bit, and even if I'm hinging a lot, as you're supposed to do with a back squat, I can keep the axis of the weight over my center of gravity, and as a result, I feel much more stable with this piece of equipment than I do with a uh, back squat. Now, are there some disadvantages? Yes. One of the big disadvantages, which I went over a little bit, is the fact that this is an 85 pound bar, and as a result, beginner lifters, even if they're taller and they want to use this piece of equipment, may have some trouble, because you know, a lot of times, uh, tall lifters, they, I mean, like, beginner lifters can't even squat the barbell, which is okay, because, you know, we all have to start somewhere, right? Um, and another uh, potential disadvantage is that uh, if you're competing in powerlifting or, like, Olympic weightlifting or any kind of sport that involves barbells, you're going to want to keep it as specific as possible, meaning that if you're training powerlifting, you probably want to train with the barbell. However, that being said, I feel that out of all um, the variations of the squat, this one has the best carryover into the back squat. So um, even though I wouldn't recommend testing it, especially if uh, competition is very important to you, I do feel that if your cambered bar back squat goes up, your barbell back squat's gonna go up as well. I do do the barbell back squat. Um, it's a little less stable for me because like I said, I'm a taller lifter. I have a long torso, so some of the problems I talked about with the barbell back squat do apply to me. However, I feel that when one lift goes up, the other lift goes up. Like the thing about the front squat or the safety bar squat, those have carryover into the squat as well because ultimately it's the same movement. You're just uh, loading the hips and the back a little bit differently. But I feel those carry much more over into my deadlift because of the way they put emphasis on thoracic extension. I really feel they target the, uh, the traps and just the T-spine and all the muscles around it. But I feel that this is like the perfect choice for people who have trouble with the back squat but still want to get the same benefits out of their hips and thighs that the back squat uh, generally gives them. So this is a difficult piece of equipment to find at most gyms. Uh, this one from Rogue Fitness is very expensive. It's about $300. Uh, there's um, some other good ones that are a little bit lighter, like 65 pounds. So if you have some issues lifting 85, 65 pounds might be a good choice. Uh, I know Elite FTS makes a really good one. I think Titan Fitness makes a really good one. But uh, if you uh, feel that like you're dreading your squat workouts, especially the back squat, or if you feel like you can only do a front squat but want to get the benefits of the back squat, I'd consider either finding a gym that has this piece of equipment, what's it called? Again, it's called the Cambridge Bar, or uh, just investing in one of your own and building up a home gym. You can get like a stand for really cheap, like $100 or so. And you know, even though this is a pretty pricey piece of equipment, you're gonna save a lot more on building your own home gym uh, compared to just, uh, you know, like uh, getting a membership at like a really pricey gym, like Lifetime Fitness or 24 Hour Fitness or something. But in any case, I mean, uh, I feel like if uh, you can benefit from this, give it a shot. I mean, even if you feel that you don't, like necessarily need this piece of equipment, I'd say give it a shot anyways, because you know, sometimes I feel that having variety in your workouts improves adherence just because it makes lifting more fun. And from a strictly functionality standpoint, I think it's good too, because let's face it, it's not like very functional to apply strength to just one piece of equipment. So getting strong at various different types of, equi types of equipment and while still training the same movement is a really good uh, way to put emphasis on some of the muscles that might be lacking. So uh, anyways, that's all I wanted to say about the Cambridge Bar. If you guys have any questions about this or anything else, uh, just let me know and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Take care.